everybody have a well. Uh, today I will read from a book titled The Nordic Window, Window Behaviorology in Nordic Architecture by Tsukamoto Yoshiharu Lab, published by Strandberg Publishing. In this meticulous study of window designs in Sweden, Finland and Denmark, Yoshiharu Tsukamoto Lab shows how architects like Leverens, Alto and Jakobsen created new window typologies by incorporating the groundbreaking production technologies that emerged in the 20th century and by learning from behaviors and traditions specific to these three Nordic countries. We have here reviewed key works by seminal modernist architects from three Nordic countries, traversing the extent of their careers in an attempt to explore their evolving considerations of window design. Between the earliest and the latest of these is a gap of 30 years, from Asplund and Leverens, 1885, who witnessed World War I as adults, to Utzon, 1918, who was raised in the interwar period. Asplund, of course, died years before World War II. Each is distinctive in his practice, but what they share is the fact that elements of their window assemblies are foundational to the age of architectural industrialization. Prior to these architects, progress in technological and materials constraints related to window design had been gradual and capable of embodying local cultures and customs as much or more than the individuality of any one architect. Then, suddenly a shift in window design at the onset of industrialization helped create new linkages between disparate elements and generate new behaviors, bringing into focus window assemblies as coordinating mechanisms and how they affect the nature of our cityscapes, thus propelling the transition to an industrial society. This means of analysis at once provides criteria for a direct comparison between different architects' windows and makes it possible to observe designers' decisions in prioritizing different relational potentials within their assemblies. It reveals both the relations of each architect to the others, but also their individual processes, indeed, their evolution. While we can talk about the characteristics of windows by architect and by country, we can also recognize similarities that transcend these categories and examine window elements and assemblies in terms of common regional and historical responses to window-specific problems. These responses can be identified by the impacts which the complex responses of window assemblies on the behavior of elements such as light and window and on the people who engage the windows, and on the changing behavior on either window side. While each of these behavioral aspects can be identified as physical or cultural phenomena, they share an immutability which cannot be traced to any individual architect. We can therefore understand that the problems of window assemblies are less design issues than they are behavioral issues and in doing so, we gain a perspective which crosses architects' eras and regions. Because these behavioral considerations are interrelated, we can reveal a variety of window issues through highlighting or prioritizing different aspects of behavior. It is not the purpose of this article to be exhaustive about all issues specific to window assemblies. Yet, even in this short review, we can see that these many window-related issues are universal and solutions are specific. It is exciting to me that these same inherent issues continue to present the same problems that architects struggle with at the beginning of the 20th century. So, rather than speaking of the problems of windowing, perhaps it's better to see them as a joyful and still unfolding playground for architectural design.
ask for the book at your local bookstore. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.